Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Dean Show. We're here at the Mass Ikna Convention. Now, have you ever had some doubts creep into your mind and you can't get them out? Maybe you've taken a philosophy class 101, you're at the university, and now the professor has planted a seed, and now it's growing and you got some doubts about your dean. My next guest is here to help you, because that's what he does. He goes out and he talks to people, talks to the adults, the youth, to help dispel those doubts, to help you get back, inshallah, God willing, to be having firmness on your dean. With my next guest here on the Dean Show, when we come back, don't go anywhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. 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 This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Dean Show. How are you, brother? Alhamdulillah. Shattering doubts. Yes. That's what you like to do. I love it. It's my passion. Explain this when we say shattering doubts. What are you trying? To, what are we trying to achieve here? Well, you know, sometimes when we talk about iman, about our faith and belief, we act like we're building in a vacuum, like it's just us. And if we learn it, it's going to stay there. But in reality, a prophet, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, says that he teaches us that iman goes up and down. He says it wears out like clothes wear from use. And so shattering the doubts is about recognizing that we're all part of the fabric of this society, multicultural society, multi-religious, and we're being bombarded with ideas from everywhere. That we, we love that and there's a lot of good we live in that, but that also is a challenge to our faith identity. It's about embracing the fact that we're going to have questions, we're going to have struggles, and we should be ready with the approaches on how to deal with that so we can keep our faith identity intact. How do you deal with this? You know, the uh, Muslim goes out or just the average human being, and he sees, she sees a bus ad and says, I don't know if you've seen this, says, there's probably no God. So stop worrying about and have a good time. Have you seen these bus ads? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've And now, the per now you know, we're, we're creatures of imitation. Now you got five in the bunch, you know, and you're the only Muslim, and now the other four people are like, hey, maybe that's right. Let's go to the bar and have a drink. Yeah. Well, uh, how do you deal with this? SubhanAllah, you know, sometimes we, deal, we react with that. Our natural reaction can be one of fear. Right, that this, I'm, I'm worried because that's going to tear apart my, apart my faith. And I don't like to look at it like that. I like to recognize the opportunity that you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Those that, that work and struggle and go out and, and try to find faith, try to be solid Muslims, Allah increases them in faith. So for me, living with these challenges is an opportunity to embrace the fact that you know what? I'm not perfect and I was never meant to be. When I'm hit with these ideas, that's a, that's a new opportunity to revisit, well, what am I about? What does it really mean to be Muslim? And what's the foundations of my faith? Because, you know, let me tell you, Brother Eddie, the person that struggles and sweats and asks and works hard, there's a way to do that. So you got to do that in a way that doesn't tear your, yourself apart. But if you know how to do that, at the end of that struggle, you will taste a sweetness of faith that somebody that didn't struggle could never touch. Because mm -hmm. Allah is just. If you're working for it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't give something to someone else on a silver platter that you worked really hard to find. And I think that's, that's the forgotten legacy of our companions. How about when you go into the land of create a doubt, into some of the universities, right? Where there is, everything is about, you know, questioning now that, uh, and God is excluded from everything. And it's really like the professors, philosophy, just, you know, debate everything, argue everything. And now you get into one of these classrooms and, and a doubt is building up, right? Yeah. Well, uh, what, what, what do you, um, what advice do you have for the university students that are going through this? You know, a lot of people want to have the freedom to question mm -hmm. and ask and explore. And I think, to be fair, that's a shortcoming on our part as a Muslim community. We've made it taboo to question. And so I tell people when you have questions, we need to re-embrace our legacy that it's okay to have a doubt, to have a question, as long as you pursue that the right way. You know, no one would take a kid and throw him into the ocean if they don't know how to swim. And similarly, we shouldn't throw ourselves into the oceans of philosophy and debate and so on. If we don't know 
what are we built on and how do we navigate this and how do I question in a way that doesn't tear my faith apart. But to look down on questioning itself, to look down on that as if a question itself is going to tear apart my faith, I see no backing for that in the religion. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ, he was approached by two men that had some awful doubt. I say awful because, you know, in the narration, the narrator didn't tell us what their question was. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, we find in our hearts that which is too awful to mention. Imagine the guts to have a question about religion and go to the Messenger of God and say, something's not right, like we don't understand something. The Prophet ﷺ, you know, if, unfortunately, if we stereotype, like we would think a lot of religious people today would beat up on those brothers, right? The Prophet ﷺ, that wasn't his reaction. He said, وَقَدْ وَجَدْتُمُوا Is this, do you really find it? He said, yes. He said, ذَلِكَ صَرِيحُ الْإِيمَانِ This is true faith. I wonder about that hadith. And I think part of what the Prophet ﷺ praised was that when they had a question, they didn't post it to 500 Facebook friends, none of whom are specialized in that area. None of them have studied the deen and help them out. They went to somebody that could empower them, but I think he also praised them for that struggle. The courage to, to look in the mirror and understand, you know, I have shortcomings and challenges and I can face myself and, and, and ask those questions. MashaAllah, you guys having fun yet? We're going to be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Muhammad and your last name is? Abu Talib. Some people are like, okay, you know, Eddie, look, you, you didn't even tell us who this guy is. You're saying some great stuff. Tell us a little about yourself. Sure, you know, I, I, um, I tell people I, I was born to Muslim parents, but I consider myself a convert, you know. Alhamdulillah, my, my family, we, we prayed, we fasted, but we didn't really know what the deen was about. And when I was a teenager, I started to get really interested in learning more about religion, seeing what peop makes people tick. And I started to read the Quran and other uh, sacred uh, scriptures of other religions. And eventually I started to memorize the Quran and I loved you know, religious studies, but especially studying Islam and the Quran. On the other hand, I love science. I remember in third grade, I did an experiment and I was just hooked. I love the scientific method. And my whole life, people were, were making me feel like I was going to be torn in two pieces. I remember, you know, one person said, the only way I keep my religion and my science straight is keep religion on one half and, and science on the other. I remember going to the masjid and feeling out of place. Like people didn't appreciate my love for academics. Then I turn around and go to school and I remember one teacher he said, Muhammad, come back here when you're 18. You're too smart to believe in God. Mm -hmm. So for him, religion was just a temporary That's thing. That's the professor now. That's what he said. He said, you're he too me. smart to believe in told God. told me, you're too smart to believe in God. He figured when I grow up, get older, come back, I'll be an atheist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a long time, I was trying to find myself. And I think we have to embrace that. You know, scholars say the worst deception is a deception of a saint. To think you're something special and you're not. We're all mm -hmm. just, yeah. we're struggling trying to find our way. But alhamdulillah, over time, you know, I eventually went to MIT, did my, my doctorate in engineering, continued to memorize the Qur'an and study Islam. And I, I love being at that line in between, loving my Islam, but loving also my profession. I work professionally as an engineer and, and seeing the beauty uh, of each in the other. Tell us now, Muhammad, look, when, when you have a firm grounding in the basic fundamentals of Islam, right? You know the Tawheed, the pure monotheism. Right, you have a sound belief system. It's 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 you, you know it, it's grounded now. 
and you know what you're saying in the prayer. You know, like many children, they grow up, let's say their parents, they teach them how to pray. They say, Allahu Akbar, and you ask them, what does that mean? Yeah. He's, God is, they don't know. They don't know what that means. It means Allah, the Creator is the greatest, right? Then they put their heads down on the ground. They've been doing it for 10, 15 years. He said, Subhana Rabbi al ala glory be to my Lord, the Most High. You ask them, look, when, when I say it, I get excited. Yeah. But now, maybe the, the kid, university student, He's been praying, he don't even know what that means. Yeah. Let him know what Tawheed means, let him know the attributes of Allah. Now, are you setting yourself up for failure? When that professor tells you there's no God, you're not even really, you're praying just through the mechanics, but the heart, it's really not connected. Yeah. How important is this? You know, I, I can't emphasize enough, Brother Eddie, what you just said. That's really, and you know, as Muslims, we have to bring the issue back to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Like, it's become commonplace that when somebody gets religious, the first thing is they're drowning in branch matters of fiqh and differences among the scholars. And we forget, was that the companion, how the companions built their iman? Did they start studying all the differences and fights and issues? They started with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I'm one of the people that I'm, I'm dying to meet. If Allah blesses me to go to Jannah, I, I really want to meet Abu Bakr. And with all respect to Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, one of the things I love about his story is, you know, when he accepted Islam, I can say with confidence, he knew less about Islam than anybody watching this program. I'm not disrespecting him, but even much of the Quran hadn't been revealed. But the Prophet ﷺ says about him, you know, his, his Iman is like the whole Ummah, it's, it's, it's heavier. But he says, Abu Bakr didn't, you know, uh, precede you, get better than you by just lots of praying and, and worship, but it was something that settled in his heart. So we have to go back to the basics, you know, understand what we're saying in prayer. Understand who is Allah? What are His attributes? How did He describe Himself? What does He want from me? You know, and we come, when we come back to those basics, we become grounded. There's a big difference when, when your Iman, when your faith is built on glass. So every question that passes by can shatter the whole thing. I'm fragile, so the next billboard, the next horrible thing that happens on the news, I'm finding my prayers affected. I'm finding my relationship with Allah affected. When you have that grounding, it's not that you don't question. It's not that you don't get challenged. We all get challenged. But when we challenge, we don't, get, we don't take a nosedive because we've got, we've got that grounding, you know? When we don't have it, it's like we're looking at the world through a pinhole. And when we do have it, the whole world falls into place because it starts and it ends and it's all guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazing, we're gonna take another break very exciting episode of the Dean show because this is something prevalent now absolutely shaitan is working to create those doubts and if we set ourselves up for failure by not being equipped with the knowledge and a connection to our creator we're we're bound to fail so we're going to be helping you guys to be firm inshallah with some great advice when we come back here on the Dean show don't go anywhere please subscribe to the Dean show follow us on our official facebook and twitter pages in the links below please also help support the Dean show by making a donation in the link below Back here on the Dean Show, and we're shattering the doubts. Now you see a individual. Now let's contrast this back to what I was saying about not being grounded in the fundamentals, the basics of Islam. And you have, let's say, this testimonial of a Christian. He was like a Muslim imam or whatever, and, and you like you're, you start to be doubtful. You, but how could someone leave Islam? You know what I mean? And then you're like, you know, listening to their story, and okay and you're listening or you're talking to someone and usually at the, the litmus test, you, I'll ask the person, I'll say, oh yeah, okay, uh, can you tell me, uh, you know, the Al-Fatiha, you were supposed to be reciting it if you were praying, can you uh, uh, define it for me? What does it mean? Yeah. And the person, A, he can't recite the Al-Fatiha and B, he doesn't know the meaning, right? So right there, you'll see that either this is just, you know, someone making up a story or that person never knew Islam in the first place because yeah. you begin, look, with the opening chapter of the Quran for the prayer. You don't know what it means, you follow me? And that goes back to what I'm saying, what we were just talking about. Really knowing what you're saying, knowing why you believe in what you believe, and questioning, right, with the, with the anticipation to get to know the answers, humbly question, Absolutely. not arrogantly, right? Absolutely. So have you seen some of these people that are out there saying that they, you know, they, they've, uh, you watch some of these videos or some people, or you maybe you met someone who now they say that they were Muslim and then they left Islam, but then had really no, none of the fundamentals, no, no, no ground in the fundamentals. Yeah, it's, it's such a challenge today, right? Yeah. Because all you have to do is turn, turn on the news, right? Yeah. And Islam and Muslims are going to be painted it, in a way that makes them look backwards and awful. I tell you, if they were the way that they're stereotyped to be, 
none of us would want to be within 100 yards yeah. of one, right? So it's a challenge because, you know, we're constantly bombarded with these images, with these pictures that make Islam and Muslims look backward. But I made a decision when I was younger. I made a decision that, that my heart, my mind, my life are too valuable for me to do the wrong thing because somebody out there, even if they look religious, even if they, if they have that uh, long beard or this look or whatever, that they're going to define a stem for it. I knew that I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, having made a principled decision myself. And I think one of the big problems we have, you know, with, with, with these things is that we sit around the coffee table and we feel powerless because that, that video is out there affecting people and, or, or that horrible thing happened thousands of miles away. And look, it hurts our hearts and it's a big issue. But what I'd encourage you know, our viewers and myself and yourself to do is don't feel powerless. Go out and, and know that Allah's going to ask you about yourself and those you touch. Counter that narrative in the small ways that you can. Right? Put a good example for yourself, for your family, for your neighbors, and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if I can't guard my heart and mind, if I can't make decisions about that fundamentals based on what's right and wrong, but just what other people are doing, then I'm just going to be with whatever click, whatever's going on in the moment. And that's not how we should live our tools. lives. Tools. What, what tools now? You know, when you go out into a battle, right, you have the proper tools. You want to defend yourself. You take a martial art. You got the tools equipped to go ahead and defend yourself in any life threatening situation. Nowadays, you know, everything is trying to suck the Iman out of you, right? Shaitan, there's this, you know, invitation to everything that's immoral, promiscuous, you know, so many bad things out there how do you equip what what advice do you give for people to equip themselves with the tools to be able to fight off all of this these negativities and the temptations etc yeah. you know I'll share with you the number one tool that I, I've experienced firsthand has helped helped a lot of people now I remember meeting a, a, a wonderful young brother but he was he was struggling with a lot of questions and I remember as we were chatting it, it was such a challenge to even answer them because we would get part way through one question and his mind would pull in another one. And then I saw this, and then this happened, and that happened overseas. This was really overwhelming the brother. And so the tool we brought into that situation is a tool that I call the parking lot. What he did is open your favorite program, your notes program on your phone, Google Doc, even a sheet of paper. And embrace that it's okay that I don't understand everything. I, I, I have the courage to face myself. Just, just park what's bothering you, what's on your mind, almost like a diary. Just put them all down. And I remember that that brother, he had been spending eight years on some of these questions. He asked the biggie mams, the YouTube personalities. Eight years, there were no questions that came off that list. Only more that came on. Alhamdulillah, by the mercy of Allah alone, after he put down that parking lot, he parked 46 questions on that list. But what changed, the questions didn't change. But something, alhamdulillah, changed in his heart and mind. He went from being led around by his questions to him being in control. All right, how am I going to build my iman? How am I going to go about this? And he had just one rule. He said, I only deal with one question at a time. That's what I told him. Brother, that most important one, put it at the top. Everything else, it'll be waiting for you when you come back. Well, my brother Eddie, you know, incredibly humbling experience. In two weeks, he had knocked off a third of his questions and he hadn't been able to do that for eight years before. So I'd really share with myself, with all of us, you know, use that parking lot, but when then you go after that question, you have to go after it with, with, with sound scholars, with people that, that talk the talk and walk the walk. People that really, um, you know, show Islam in its true colors and can help you navigate those waters as you build and, and develop your email. How important would you say is it is the sincerity in the question because you can be asking questions and the creator knows what's in your heart yeah. if you're now playing games yeah. or you sincerely want to know and now you're humbly coming to ask with the intention that now you want to learn more about your creator you're not just looking for a loophole in the Absolutely. law to go ahead and maybe have this you know uh, be a means for you to go ahead and go out and follow your desires so now you, you find something that doesn't fit with you right you're not sincere and then you know Allah lets you go to wherever you want to go because now the intention wasn't right so how, yeah. how important is this you know without sincerity um, we can ask 
but that asking is not going to take us a good place. We believe as Muslims that that sincerity is so important. And you know, I'm reminded of a verse in the Quran, and it talks about you know that some things are clear and other things have differences upon them. But it's Allah speaking, right? So He says something incredible because Allah knows our intentions, right? We just judge actions, but Allah speaks about what's in the heart. He says, Those that literally, it means in their hearts, they know they should go this one, but they want to go around. That's the linguistic meaning. It's like a lack of sincerity. It says, It says they go after issues of difference, confusing things, issues where there's multiple opinions, but he says why? Looking for fitna, looking for problems, and looking for far-fetched interpretations. That's what I'm talking about. See, yeah. so Allah tells you, you, are, you can fool me, you can fool the shit, but you can't fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He says, illallah. None that know its true meaning except Allah. But then Allah continues about what we should do. That we should, you know, seek with sincerity. And by the way, we don't question for fun in Islam. We question to change ourselves. Understand that when we question, we take a responsibility on ourselves. That when I get that answer, when I get closer, I'm not questioning for fun. I'm questioning because I want to be a better person. Because I know at the end of the day, I'm going to answer for what I did before Allah. So in Islam, it's not, we got a few minutes left. So it's right that in Islam, you know, there's no problem with asking questions sincerely. It's not just about blindly, you know, uh, people really love Islam because there's evidence, there's proof to back up why we believe that this Quran is from the Creator, why the Prophet Muhammad is indeed a messenger from God. So we don't shy away from, from these questions, right? Absolutely not. You know, I, I love the verse in the Quran, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Has لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ the foundation. And then Allah says, فَعْلَمْ Go work to know that this is true. You see, Iman for us is not a magic trick. It takes investment, it takes hard work, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you. But you gotta start, you gotta want it. And so absolutely, it's okay to question, but question within, within you know, with a system, knowing that ultimately this is taking a point. And, and one, you know, quick piece of advice that I would just share is that I think one of the, the worst things for our Iman today is, is a website, crazyfetwa.com. Look, it's not a real website, but it's a phenomenon, right? That people are discrediting the deen because you know, we post questions and then anybody posts anything on the internet to discredit it. Like, you know, this is just a hodgepodge, this is nothing. So when, when we question, we really look to those of, of understanding, of education, and of character, of character, because that sincerity is so important. Questions don't go away by wishful thinking, they don't go away by magic. They go away by learning, by discipline, by intention, and by hard work. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, being with us. Pleasure having you. Thank wonderful you. Wonderful to be with you and wonderful to be with our audience. Peace thank with you. Salam. And thank you for tuning in to the Dean Show. And I hope you got to benefit sincerity, the right intention, and sincerely asking the one who created you to guide you. And any time that you have some doubts, hey, right there, stop and drop. As a Muslim, you know that now you have this direct dialogue connection with the one who made you. That's right. And then obviously ask those questions sincerely. And inshallah, God willing, Allah will facilitate a way that those doubts can be erased. Subscribe if you haven't already and tune in every week to The Dean Show. Until then, peace be with you. Salamu Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.